Hi, this is Sid here with Kimber, back here with uh, Holly. Hi, I'm Holly Smith, and I am a part of Gwinnett County Relay, and this year I served as the event co-lead. Well, Holly, Gwinnett County Relay, what is it like to be a part of the largest relay in the world? Well, it's the most fun. It's a party. Um, it's festive, it's a celebration, and it brings the community out every year. So how do, you, how do you get people to come out every year, year after year? Well, and I have to say, it's a challenge, just like in a small relay or a big relay. Um, we have to motivate people to come out just the same way, th using social media. Um, we really hit upon our school system, and they bring a lot of students and parents and community members, but of course also the churches and just the community in general. Gwinnett has been a relay for 25 years, and so people know, and they look for it, and they put it on their calendar every year and won't miss it. Now, part of being the largest relay in the country yes. is having over 200 teams. Yes. Now, that's a lot of teams and team members to connect with. How do you make each one feel they're special and let them know that they're making a difference no matter what size of team they are? Yes. It is so true. We have so many different types of teams, and so we really try to have a mentorship program um, where we have people reaching out to teams, uh, making those those special touches via email, via phone call, via just drop-in nights at the office where we might only see six team captains, but we get to actually make a connection with those six team captains. Um, so again, it, it is a challenge though with 200 teams. So. We try new ways every year and are always looking for better ideas or, or ways that other communities do it as well because it's hard to get to all of those 200 teams and make sure that they feel just as apart as everyone else. Now, not only are you large in numbers, but you're also an amazing fundraising event, always in the top. Um, can you give us your best fundraising tip? Yes, well personally, um, I have been relaying for 15 years, um, and so 15 years ago I would start by writing letters to all of my friends and family, and now that has moved to online, which is so easy, and every year I have my list and I send out my emails to friends and family and community members, and I follow up in March always, and then I follow up in May right before our event, and I would say it's the best easiest way to raise money as an individual. Of course, if you have a large team, there's so many other options, but as an individual, it works every time. And then you get reoccurring donators who every year are asking, you haven't sent your email yet, Holly, you need to send it so I know where to, where to donate. So emailing is the best. Excellent. I have another question. Do you personalize your emails? Oh, I put pictures, I put colors, I always include how long I've relayed, and I'll always tell my relay story and why it matters to me. Um, and most of the time, that then matters to them because it matters to me. So. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. We, we uh, always love to hear what's going on in Gwinnett County, and uh, good luck this year. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Hi, I'm Kimber and this is Sid and we're back with Lisa. Hey, I'm Lisa Eaton. I'm with the Cobb County Relay in uh, Georgia. We're in Cobb County, Georgia. All right. Well, we've heard great things about your event. And can you share a little bit how your event incorporates ACS's mission into your relay? Yes, we first started incorporating mission at the event itself, and now we've incorporated mission more at the ELT and the team captain meetings. Uh, instead of just talking about road to recovery, we have people come in and speak about how they uh, were impacted by those programs, by those services. Instead of just talking about grants that were funded uh, for research on medications, we have people that have come in and used those medications, been in the trials. Um, that's been very powerful. Uh, and also with our ACS can, that's been a huge motivator amongst our participants also to get them really passionate about what ACS stands for. Excellent. Now think back to your event. How do you guys incorporate mission there, or specific activities that you hold during your event that incorporate it? Well, we have the survivors reception, and at that point, we have a lot of people come out and support the uh, survivors, and we have people that come and speak and our opening ceremony that provides information on how their particular organization has benefited from the American Cancer Society and made powerful impacts on people in our community. So it's personal, and I think that's really important if you can make it personal to your participants. Excellent. Thanks for sharing. So you, your event is is a top 15 
uh, event in fundraising every year. How do you guys manage to, to do that year after year? You know, it's really um, exciting that we're able to participate with that. I think one of the reasons is because of the veteran ELT that we have. Uh, our volunteers are, are veterans. I, this is my 16th year serving on the ELT, and uh, there are people that were serving before I even got there that are still on the ELT. And I don't feel like it's the same old, same old every year, but I think that their wisdom really takes us in the right direction to be able to plan an effective event. That's that's really awesome. How do you uh, how do you keep uh, the people coming back on your event leadership team every year? Everybody's really passionate about it, and you know I'm very fortunate that I myself have not been uh, touched by cancer. But I would say everybody on our ELT uh, is either a survivor or most definitely a caregiver. And I think it's the internal passion that keeps them coming back. And despite any uh, you know, bumps along the way that might happen due to you know, fundraising or the way the economy is, everybody just comes back year after year because it is so important and we just keep trying to bring new people with us to build the team. Great. Can you share with us one of your greatest fundraising tips that helps you be so successful year over year? Well, I teach high school and uh, I have a, a team at my high school. And I told my uh, team members, my students, how important it was to do mission moments within our fundraising. So if we're collecting coins on campus, we're also handing out a piece of paper saying, this is where your money went in Cobb County. This is how it impacts you. You know, we have students that share their stories with other students. And so I found that the best way that you can impact your fundraising again is to bring in the mission and to make it personal and make it local how, how are we using these funds locally in our communities that's fabulous Thanks. thank you so much for joining us today we look forward to seeing great things from you guys again this awesome. year awesome super and excited thank you thank you thank Thanks. you so much